Today on Torch TV, we take a behind the scenes look at one of the largest musical productions in recent years. Formal is back. This weekend, for the very first time, Formal is being held in our very own East Gymnasium. And we look into our winter sports as they kick off their seasons. All that and more on Torch TV. Hello and welcome back to the Columbus East Media Studios and this edition of Torch TV. Happy Friday. I'm your host Peyton Meyer and alongside me is Matthew Degner. How are you doing today, Matthew? I'm doing well. I'm excited for the last Friday before Thanksgiving break. And before we get started, we wanted to let everyone know that we're both vaccinated and that's why we're able to have our masks off for our show today. Today is a food pantry Friday. Pre-bagged food will be available for students to pick up in a grab-and-go system after school. The pantry is located in the hallway behind the library. Remember Olympians, the food pantry is for you. Today's top story has to do with all the behind-the-scenes magic that happens in order to put the school's musical on. Everything that we see on stage is made possible by those behind the curtain. Junior Caleb Nolman here is here and joins us with more. Thanks Matthew. Actors and actresses may get all of the glory, but the work of those behind the scenes truly make all the difference. The tech crew at East may not be seen during a show, but their efforts are what makes the show possible. So our students take on pretty much all of the roles that we can put them in safely. So the students will help us build the set that Mr. Welsh designs. Um, they will help me paint the set. Um, they will help us gather any properties and set dressings that we might need for the set. Um, we have lighting designers that will design the lights along with students hanging and focusing the lights. So we try to give the students a very well-rounded education in theater so they get to touch all parts of technical theater. While being a part of the tech crew is a big commitment and it takes a lot of work, it is also a nice break from normal school activities fun time. Uh, it's a great way to meet friends, do something after school. Um, for me, it was always a very low stress environment, so it was something fun to do that wasn't, you know, studying. While tech and theater can be a lot of fun, safety is a big concern during rehearsals and shows. We spend the majority of our time making everything as safe as possible. Theatrical sets and scenery are made to travel that can present some safety challenges that we have to make sure we pay close attention to um, for our actors. The show premieres tonight at 7 in the Robbins Auditorium. Additional shows are Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 2.30. Since this is an East Drama production, about how many students are involved in the play? It's a lot more than you might think. We have 37 different actors on stage each night along with 20 individual technicians who are responsible from everything from cues and set changes to audio and lighting. That does not include extra people who helped construct the sets and configure the lights before show days. There are also seven students in the orchestra pit that will provide the soundtrack for the show. It's definitely a big production. After not being able to have a winter formal last year, Student Assembly has worked hard this year and we are able to have one under new COVID guidelines. This dance this year will take place at Saturday, on Saturday here at East. New rules have been set in place and masks are required in order to ensure a safe and fun night for everyone. We're able to have a formal, but we have to wear masks. The formal is at East this year. Um, it has always been at Southside, but due to COVID restrictions, we are having it at East because it's a bigger area. Due to the awesome new flooring in the gym, we are going to have a little bit of a, a shoe change. So instead of just having any type of heels that you want, we are just limiting it to block heels or a wedge heel. So no spiked heels. The theme is neon at night. So we're gonna have a bunch of glow in the dark decorations and hopefully some black lights. And we are just having a playlist but 
I assure you the playlist will be awesome. I just want everyone to be mindful of the COVID protocol and have fun and make sure everything's school appropriate and make memories. As a reminder, you must have your student ID number as well as your ticket in order to enter the dance. If your day does not go to East, they need to be registered in the bookstore by today. Are you multilingual? By taking the Avant Stamp Test, you could qualify for the Indiana Certificate of Multilingual Proficiency, as well as earn up to six world language credits. The test will be offered on the morning of Thursday, December 9th in room C104. You can sign up for this test on It's Learning by Friday, December 3rd. Your boys' varsity basketball team has its first scrimmage this Saturday at home. They will take on Ron Culley starting at 11 a.m. And speaking of sports, here's our very own Ryland Perkins with more. This week in sports, the JV wrestling team has a reserve invite at Jennings County at 9.30 a.m. Congratulations to Gabby Dean for being a part of the 2021 IHS VCA Junior All-Star Team. Nora Dwinger and Chris Quessenberry were both voted first team All-State for soccer. Last night, our Lady O's went up against the East Central Trojans. The Olympians came out on top with a 55-46 win. Congratulations, ladies. Also, a big congrats to Elizabeth Prophet for being the Athlete of the Week for swimming. Good luck to our cheer team who competes in their first regionals competition this Sunday. Columbus East would like to welcome the boys' new varsity head coach, Keith Van Dievener. Call out meeting will be held on Monday the 22nd at 5.30 in the chamber. This upcoming Monday, senior Dathan Wolf will be signing for the Valparaiso University swim team. Senior athletes such as Dathan are making decisions on where to continue their sports careers. This is a major decision for these athletes that many components play in. Today, we have a special guest, Cadence Gilly. She was one of the few to already sign for volleyball. Cadence, what is one thing that you learned during the recruiting experience? Uh, I learned never to rule out any coach or college, and it was really cool to be able to talk to these coaches and learn their personalities and how they run their programs. Uh, were there any other offers that you considered? Uh, yes, I had offers from both Xavier and Marion, and I was talking to Central Michigan, but I just knew Indiana State was the place for me. So what exactly stood out about Indiana State? Um, for starters, the coaches. They are so awesome, and I just cannot wait to play for them. Um, I knew when choosing a school, I didn't want to go too far from home, so I think ISU is the perfect fit. And um, they have what I want to study and major in. And then a little bonus is my brother goes there. So your brother goes there. How else did your fa friends and family play into this decision? They were so supportive through the whole thing. Um, they never tried to steer me to go to one college or the next. And um, they were just there for me through the whole time. So what goals are you looking to achieve in your first year at Indiana State? Um, one of my big goals is to be able to start as a freshman. Start as a freshman. Thank you, Cadence, and I look forward to seeing your career continue. Thank That's you. all we have for the sports today. Back to you guys. From Matthew, Caleb, Rylan, Cadence, and the rest of the Torch TV crew, I'm Peyton Meyer. Please remember to take care of yourself, others, and the place. And remember, try to be the best part of someone's day. Thanks for watching.